name the possible pitfalls that could stop us from having meaningful relationships. Two things. One thing with two different, I guess, segues. One, the past mistakes of our parents. But then two, the past relationships we've had. I say that because one, we learn by observation, but we also internalize where our parents said don't go, where our parents said don't, who our parents said don't talk to, uh, some of the pain that our parents expressed. Uh, and it's very painful because there are some people who grow up, including myself, where we grow up with these with these things or these thoughts or these realities or these perceptions about life and about people based off of our parents' experience. That's not okay. And I'll give an example just to make it make sense. I remember, and I'm only sharing this because this is public. I remember there was a time where ultimately, um, I never asked for help. I never asked for money. But here's the even crazy part, I never received it. So even if it was given to me, I didn't have to ask, I wouldn't take it. That's how I was raised. See what I'm saying? And ultimately, you know, my mom was always very strict about that. Listen, don't take money from nobody and don't ask nothing from nobody. Um, and that's how I grew up. Um, but ultimately, as a young kid, you know, it got to the place where I was hungry. And people were asking me, like, yo, you want some to eat? I'm like, I'm good. <laughs> Dead hungry. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Or, you know, somebody would offer me money or try to give me with something. I'm like, no, 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 no. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. That's how I was raised. Um, and I'm living out this experience that I'm perceiving as true. Um, and ultimately, there was a time where we literally were in my pastor's office. And, um, you know, my, my pastor was talking to my mom. I was just there with my brother and my sister. Um, he said, oh, you know, he told my mom, you know, grab some food and stuff, you know, and you guys, you know, just kind of just eat or whatever. My mom was like, no, 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 we're going to go. And he was like, eat. That's false humility. And at first I'm like, dang, Pastor, like my mom, like, why you, you know what I'm saying? Like, dang, like, I'm looking like, I don't even know what false humility is. I never even heard that before. And I'm sitting there like, dang, like, but to this day, I thank God that I was able to see that because it started the questioning. It started, why do I do what I do? Because I don't know why I'm doing it. I'm just doing it it's because I'm living out the experience that how I was raised. Ultimately, um, me and my mom laugh about this to this day. But ultimately, I had to recognize that my mom was teaching me things that were very critical about people, um, about life. But I was taking her wisdom without her experience. But ultimately, it can get mixed in with if I don't separate the wisdom with the experience, I'll get confusion. I won't ever have real clarity, but ultimately what my mom was saying, there are some people that may bring up things that they did for you. So you can't always ask certain people, but I can ask this trustworthy friend that has literally had my back and reassured me that they got me if I ever need anything and I don't have to keep rejecting help if they offer it to me. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. So we can go down a list with that, and there's so many things, but ultimately, my mom has been through some things that it might have caused her to put a wall up in certain areas of trust. Now, I can take the wisdom, but I have to live out my own experience. You see what I'm saying? So that's one of the first things that I've saw, and that's just one example, but that's one of the things I realized that our, our parents' experiences are not ours. We can take their wisdom, and apply it so we can properly navigate our own experiences. But we can't just go, well, my mom was hurt, so I'm gonna be hurt in the same way, so I can't trust people in this way. And it's like, no, 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 no. That's a perverted mindset, and you, you'll find yourself in a whole bunch of chaos. To God be the glory, I've been delivered from that. I love asking for help. I love um, being able to not just simply guard my heart, but assess who are the people that God has sent to me for me so I can receive from them, rather than putting my heart in the hands of people that clearly are not for me and then ending up 
hurt or in pain or mismanaging my heart. But then two, our own past mistakes. The biggest mistake we make is th like if we get involved, let's say in a romantic relationship. Oh, I'm gonna treat you as if you cheated on me like the last person. No, this person never cheated on you. <laughs> don't, don't take what happened in that relationship and bring it into this one. Yeah, you did get hurt, but don't put this burden on this person because they never hurt you. Now, let them show you who they are. But you, we, we bring our past experiences into our new ones and it creates chaos, even with friends. Okay, my last friend was jealous of me. So now I'm gonna look at all my friends like they just jealous of me? No, just pay attention to the fruit. What are people showing you? Not by words. Our mistake is we listen to people's words. And ultimately, again, we can never take our past mistakes or our past experiences and just assume it's going to happen again. That's not true. But even with making or establishing meaningful relationships, here's the hard part. There will be this, I'm meeting someone new, or I have people already in my life that are going to go through the test of time that are gonna go through the test of tribulations, trials, and advers advers adversity, that is gonna go through the test of establishing their trustworthiness. You don't test people, life tests people. See what I'm saying? And ultimately, that's the issue. We, one, romanticize people too quickly, or we adore some of our friends too quickly, or we're quick to call people friends. Just go through life. Give access as it's earned. You see? Don't be so quick to just handing out your heart. You have to manage your heart. So that, that's the most difficult part though because here, here's the thing. In making or establishing meaningful relationships, there's always gonna be a risk. But the way to not be hurt in these risks is if you manage your heart properly with boundaries and you do not lower your standards for words. You don't lower your standards ever, but what I mean is if you if you stand for this, you stand for that. And if it's going to be a particular boundary where, you know what, you know, th there's just certain things you, you, you don't move on. Just because someone flirts with you, calls you pretty, calls you handsome, or someone, you know, reposted your picture on IG, that doesn't make them your friend. And ultimately, see, we, we blur the lines. Friends are born in times of adversity. You see what I'm saying? Life tests people. There are people, number one, who are for you, who are born for you, who have, have grace for you, who God has clearly sent to you. You'll know about how they edify you, how they challenge you, how they inspire you, how they correct you, how they bring you closer to God. There's so many things you can look for, but the fruit, they have to display love. They have to display patience, kindness, gentleness see faithfulness see self-control there's so many things that that you can kind of see number one do they have a meaningful relationship with god for themselves because here's the thing that i learned when it comes to expectations on people if they don't love themselves bro it's it's safe to say they're not gonna be able to really love you if they don't show up for themselves it's safe that they won't be able to show up for you if they don't love God, you can't even expect them to display even godly attributes or godly friendship for you. So ultimately, you know, you, you have to also see where people are and ask God, who are they supposed to be to you before you put an unnecessary expectation on them? Because there are some people being hurt by people, not necessarily because they're bad people, because they put their expectations on them and they never had the grace to carry it out they'll always end up disappointed. You see what I'm saying? So it's it's such a journey. It's such a journey, but it's so important to assess and, and ask the Holy Spirit, invite him in on that journey to you establishing meaningful relationships because God will highlight people to you, good and bad. It's important.